Let's have a burial at sea. Oh, Lord, into your depths we commend this raccoon. This was a great raccoon loved by Paul. But can we find no meaning in this tragedy? No. I always wonder where those dead animals at the side of the road came from. <laughs> Welcome to the Frantic Show. If you really want to enjoy this week's show, you'll need to get a few things. A pair of scissors, three old newspapers, a tub of flour paste, and an old broken rake handle. You go get the stuff, I'll wait right here. <laughs> oh, Mr. Mathers, right on time. I see my nurse told you to take off your shirt and pants already. No, was I supposed to wear some? <laughs> no, uh, not necessarily. Oh, good. Have a seat. Okay. <laughs> now I need some information here. Uh, wait. Half an hour. But I, I, I look at your goldfish, so that's no problem. Okay, let's start with the chest, shall we? Sure. Cough, please. Again? <laughs> and now, a message from Phil. People of Earth, this is Phil speaking. I am overriding your regular Earth broadcast to inform you that I shall be your new leader. Lay down your arms and follow me. Dr. Phil Verer, 339 Broadhope Avenue. I am a dentist. It is foolish to resist. We now return you to regular Earth broadcasting. All right, Angelina's Pizza, the hot where the hot chicks hang out. I can't see a thing with these dark glasses on, Lou. Don't take them off, honey. If those chicks recognize us love gods, they'll go mad. <laughs> what do you have? Um, a zesty super pizza and two fruit colas, please. Right. Hey, honey, did you see that waitress? That sassy mama wants to jump my boat. I do not know, Lou. The way she waked her crumbs all over me. It's her coy way of saying, yes, Mr. Ecstasy, I'll take a chance on pleasure. <laughs> oh, um, thanks. <laughs> Talk about your action, Central. That woman was all over you. Why, she... Darn, I missed it. It's amazing she didn't just flop out on the table and scream, here and now, Dr. Fabulous, I can't wait another second for your potion of motion. Oh, there are two more sex goddesses giving us the glad eye of connubial acquiescence. Maybe we should go over there and tell them about our plans to start a ham radio club at school? No way, honey, they couldn't take it. They'd just go so mad, they'd probably melt into puddles of passion, and then we'd be charged with involuntary super chick suicide. Oh, boy, this passion power is dangerous. It's like they say, 
with great power comes great responsibility. And our responsibility is to drive chicks mad! <laughs> hey, guys, it's ready. Oh, oh okay. hey, let's go. Okay, this one's called Stop the Smoker. Oh, can I leave now? Stop smoking, please. Stop smoking, please. Thank you. Hi, right, welcome back. Having fun so far? Great. Well, if you really want to enjoy this week's show, you'll need to get just a few more things. Uh, one basketball. Uh, a length of binder twine about, oh, about that long, uh, an old stuffed toy, and a big box of dirt. Now, we go get them. Come on. No. Come on. No. <laughs> Come on. No. No. Come on. No. Emily, look there, a young couple in love. Talk, talk, talk. What did they have to talk about so long? Now yeah, you remember. I don't. Oh, come on. No. Come on. No. Come on. No. Come on. Come on. No. Who are you? I'm Sydney, the complaint department man. May I help you? Yeah, the splendor, it's... Look, this is stupid. Stop that. Stand up and talk to me. No, but I am standing up, sir. Cut it out. Hey! No, 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 no. Ignore the man behind me. He, he's not important. I have a complaint to make. Hey, if you don't stop bothering me, I'll leave. Then you won't have anybody to complain to. <laughs> Tell Sydney what's wrong. Yes, sir. Do you have a complaint? Damn it, all right. Yes, this splendor. I bought it here. Call me Sydney. Yes, Sydney. Actually, this... call me Little Sid. That's what my mother used to call me. Oh, I remember as a child her bouncing me on her knee. Well, it was her wrist really, but oh, what a time to be alive. It's about this blender I bought here. It's broken. Oh, uh, do you have a receipt? No, I lost my receipt, but I do have a charge card form that proves that I oh. bought it here. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. No refunds without a receipt. There's nothing I can do about it. There are rules, and I'm stuck in a man's hand. I don't believe this. I get ripped off for a useless blender, and then I gotta take this crap from Howdy Doody? I want to see the manager. Manager! Yes, how do you do? I'm the manager. May I help you? Fine, fine. I want my money back, no, and if I don't get it... And now, a message from Phil. People of Earth, are you, are you listening, listening or what? what? I have offered you global government, a benign dictatorship, but no one has called. Pitiful attempts to overthrow me have been mounted by cavities of foolhardy rebels. Alex Warncliffe on T-Berry Crescent is still mowing his lawn. Remember, the number to call is 555-5555. Call now and surrender. Ask for Phil. We now return you to regular Earth broadcasting. Arlene? Arlene, there's someone at the door. Arlene, you stupid cow, get the bloody door! Arlene! Oh, yeah, that's right. She left me. Coming! Coming! Oh. Hey! My car's been stolen! Well, at least they left your hubcaps. You gotta help me, officer. Well, I'm sorry, ma'am. There's nothing we can do about it. Can't you put 
out an old points bulletin for the license plate and check well-known car thieves and, and body shops and hot, hot cars and, and circulate the serial number to the police departments around the country, huh? Wow! There's all kinds of things we can do about it. Yeah. But so many cars have been stolen lately, there's no way we could catch the car thieves and still make it home in time for Family Feud. Never mind. I'll find someone who represents truth, justice, law, and order. Elmer, the safety elephant? No, Mr. Canoe Head. Mr. Canoehead. Once a mild-mannered insurance salesman. Who one day, while portaging his aluminum canoe in Algonquin Park, was suddenly hit by a giant bolt of lightning. Hit by lightning! You were hit by lightning! And had the canoe welded to his head. You're right. It stuck to your head. And so began the story of Mr. Canoehead. Canada's greatest aluminum crime fighter. Brother of Ted. That's me! Our story continues. How are we gonna get my car, Mr. Canoehead? By disguising myself as a fancy sports car. You have the accoutrements, officer. No, that cleared up. <laughs> Windshield fasten. I hope it doesn't rain. I forgot my wipers. Uh... Oh. oh, I love a man in a hood ornament, Mr. Canoehead. It's so Buick. Now, I'm gonna need these back by tonight. We're going cruising. Now to set my trap. Six hours gone. My meter must be expired by now. Wish I had a radio. Hey, Louie, what kind of car is this? I don't know. I'm a fancy Italian tornellini. Whoa, it talks like the Knight Rider car. Let's heist this. Oh, boy, I'm being stolen. Wait, this ain't no ordinary sports car. It's Mr. Sports Car Head. Not quite. I'm really Mr. Canoe Head. Now taste gunnels, you auto absconders. Thank you, Mr. Canoe Head. There's your car, ma'am. The thieves had it on them. <laughs> Mr. Canoe Head. Can I ever possibly repay you? No. <laughs> Did you woof? Did you rowl? Did you do the liquid laugh? Did your dinner make an encore? Did you up chuck? Did you chunder? Did you do the toilet tangle? Did you do the technicolor yawn? Did you drive the porcelain bus? Yes, doctor, I was sick to my stomach. Uh-huh, some nausea. <laughs> oh, hi, welcome back. Okay, you ready for some fun? Yeah, great. Now, take the rake handle, tie the string to that end. You take the string from this end and tie it to the stuffed animal. Then you take the mannequin, and you pose it around. Ma mannequin. Mannequin. Oh, mannequin. Oh, I didn't. I forgot the mannequin. Oh. We need. We need a mannequin. And uh, a pair of swim fins. Oh, and two goalie nets. Uh -huh. And a small electric fan with a long extension cord. Right. And and um, a bucket of orange juice. <laughs> Four. Four buckets of orange juice. Four buckets of orange juice. Hurry. Okay. We're, we're running out of time. Here. Yo. Here we go. A hockey net. Yeah, two of them. Rick has them in his car. Hurry. <laughs> But we'll get to it, folks. Don't spell the beans. I suppose you're wondering why I called you all here today. Didn't call us here today. Silence! You're all here because you are prime suspects in a case which I like to call <laughs> the case of the missing wallet. <laughs> Wallet again. Each of you was present in this room at the time the wallet was stolen. Each of you had access to my coat in which I keep the wallet. But what about motive? Let's talk about motive, Mr. Wildman. <laughs> Isn't it true that you have talked incessantly about buying a new automobile? Oh, well, this is ridiculous. Aha! <laughs> uh -huh. Denial. I couldn't buy a new car with the $18 you had. Aha! 
And how did you know I had $18 in my wallet? Well, yesterday was payday, right? Yes. Well, every payday, you normally blow everything you have except for the price of 24 beer. <laughs> Which brings us to you. Where did you find the money to buy that expensive Indonesian meal you ate for lunch? Nowhere. I cooked it at home and brought it in. I see. Well, <laughs> how convenient. How terribly, terribly convenient, Mr. Chato, is it? <laughs> it's all beginning to make sense to me now. And the truth is far more sinister than even I could have dreamed. All three of you. All three of you were involved in a crime so heinous, so dastardly, it defies all levels of moral decency. No, your wallet's here on the floor. Where are you dropping? <laughs> oh. Excuse me. I... I'll do anything to avoid looking stupid. That's our Danny. <laughs> I mean, why can't I find a woman? I mean, besides Fat Shirley. I mean, it ain't like there ain't no other women in the world. There are, I checked. There are over two billion women in the world. And all I'm asking for is just a, a little bit of that action. I mean, say I dated a billion girls. That would still leave a billion for all the other guys. And say I just dated the good-looking ones? Like, um... 150 million. Well, they'd have to want to go out with me, so that's a 15. No, no. 10 million good looking women that want to date me. So where are they? <laughs> well, can't date the ones that don't live in North America. I don't have a plane. And 60% uh, are going to be too young. Or too old. <laughs> that leaves uh, 20,000. That's like, uh, well, that's one a day for the rest of my life. That's not being greedy, is it? Okay, so they gotta live close by, right? Because I don't have a car either. And they have to pay their own way. That's, uh, 107. Well, uh, her parents will have to approve of me. It's 15. <laughs> She's got, like, demolition derby and, uh, opening beer bottles with her teeth. <laughs> Brings it down to Fat Shirley. Wow. What will I call Fat Shirley and tell her she's the only girl in the world for me? Hey, lady, you got a quarter? <laughs> Hello, I'm Mr. Interesting. Here's something I find very interesting. You are on a cruise ship heading south at five knots an hour. The fog you're in is heading northwest at one knot an hour. A hurricane is approaching from the southeast at 50 knots an hour. Isn't that the worst vacation you've ever taken? <laughs> Say, that's some smooth shave, Fats. Thanks, Bill. Hmm. Beneath the spreading trees, our trips to the old soda shop, chocolate malt with nuts on top. It wasn't my fault if I couldn't stop till my lips began to freeze. When I asked you for your handy, handy, handy. That it would be dandy. 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 But you had a boy named Randy. 
Randy. Randy. Randy. <laughs> and now, a message from Phil. Pay attention to that woman. She is my wife, your future queen, and the dental hygienist in her own right. No one has called. The phone hasn't rung. Now you shall feel a dentist's wrath. <laughs> Yes, this is Phil. Oh, well, thank you very much. Right. Have a nice day. That was the people of Earth, apparently, surrendering. You have made an intelligent choice. Starting tonight, I shall show you how to live in harmony. Not tonight, Phil. Don't you remember we had that dinner engagement with the Finleys? Oh, all right. Starting tomorrow, I shall show you how to floss. This is Phil, your leader, saying good night. We now return you to regular Earth broadcasting. Hi, welcome back. You got everything? Great. Well, now you can play fungal ball. All right. Oh, if you don't know how to play fungal ball. Oh. Sure. Okay, okay. okay. Gentlemen, place your orange juice. All right. All right. <laughs> orange juice. Orange juice. All right. All right. <laughs>